um, just I want to start by saying welcome to this event to support Solar for All and Solar Works DC, hosted by the Mayor Office of Latino Affairs and the DC Solar for All program. Before to present myself, I would like to start with uh, this presentation with two questions. Please keep in mind this for the end. First question is, how could one opportunity change your life? Second is, do we have enough opportunity in our city? Well, my name is Patricio Alvarez. I am the PV Designer Engineer Manager at New Columbia Solar. I was born in Ecuador and in 2016 I moved uh, to this beautiful city uh, where my wife work is actually. I was scared as when you move to a new city, you know, you have to deal with too many different things uh, such as uh, you have to find a new friends, you have to learn a new culture. Especially I will mention the hardest part of my uh, decision to move to DC was to learn a new language. So I have to learn to speak English. By the way, by back then I didn't speak English. So um, after I moved to this beautiful city, fortunately, the Solar Wars DC programs start shortly, and I decided to apply. What makes this program so great is the opportunity to really learn the fundamental of this industry. Right after I complete the program, New Columbia Solar recruited me as a solar installer. And let me tell you the benefits to start a job in the clear energy industry with a training program is that you get to build a technical career from the bottom. It's the chance to work your way up and carry the experience and knowledge you learn on the ground floor throughout the full process with you build your career. And here, I would like to thank New Columbia Solar because they support my career by providing the resources and the mentorship to help me advance in the industry. I'm proud to say we are the largest commercial solar development in the district and we are really making a difference to building solar installation across of the city and changing the way that DC is getting its energy. I would like to point out that New Columbia Solar is the largest partner of Solar for All program. The company contribution is that we develop the community solar projects that provide access to clean energy to low-income families across of the district. I'm sure Mayor uh, Mario Bowser will tell you more about this. To conclude this introduction, I would like to thank the mayor, your staff, and the city for creating amazing opportunities such as Solar Work DC, which can have a real impact on the life of people as it was my case where it opened many doors. You may recall the beginning, I asked two questions and I ask please keep in mind. The first question was, how one opportunity can change your life? And I will said, it can change 180 degrees if you get this opportunity. So here today, you have one example. I will say myself, I, I was new in this city. I found the opportunity. I applied for this opportunity. I was accepted on this program and I got the chance. And today I'm helping to get the green energy on this beautiful city, building solar system across of the roofs in Washington, DC. Um, before to finish this introduction, I would like to um, give some words in Spanish because this is for uh, a Spanish community as well. And 
lo puedo decir eh, sería muchas de las veces pensamos en el tiempo que tú vas a gastar en hacer un, un training o un programa para tu formación y piensas en el dinero que vas a perder en esos tres meses, seis meses o un año de formación si tú te dedicas a estudiar, pero tienes que pensar en cómo va a cambiar ese tiempo de formación en tu futuro. Las oportunidades que te puede ofrecer en el futuro son incontables. Aprovechen las oportunidades que esta ciudad tiene. He tenido la oportunidad de vivir en diferentes ciudades de diferentes países y tengo que decir que Washington, D.C. es una de las ciudades que ofrece inmensas oportunidades para personas que necesitan un desarrollo profesional. And without that said, I have the honor to introduce the mayor of DC, Mayor Mario Bowser, who administration is focused on making DC prosperity more inclusive, advancing DC values, and building safer, stronger, and healthy neighborhood across DCA worlds. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Hola, buenos dias. How is everyone today? Let's give Patricio a big round of applause. We are uh, continuing back to basics week today. Um, we are here at the beautiful Columbia Heights Community Center. I also want to thank my friends behind me. You couldn't have picked a better day to have beautiful fall sun uh, to talk about solar energy. Uh, we're here at Columbia Heights because this is one of our government buildings with solar panels on the roof. Uh, you can't uh, see them very well from here, but trust us. And Mr. Alvarez can certainly vouch for us. Uh, I am here with the leaders of the mayor's office on Latino affairs. And last week, I introduced Eduardo Pertomo as the director of the mayor's office of Latino affairs. Please give Eduardo a big round of applause. I'm also here with the director of the P Department of Energy and then the Environment, who I saw, who is Tommy, right there. Tommy Wells. Give Tommy Wells a big round of applause. And the director of the D.C. Department of Employment Services, Unique Morris Hughes. Please give Unique Morris Hughes a big round of applause. Uh, and we've talked a lot during this pandemic about our health response. Uh, we've talked about our homeland security response. But our economic response has been just as important. And I'm just really um, so grateful to the employees of the Department of Employment Services for your hard work and getting out over $2 billion in less than 20, less than 20 months um, to help D.C. residents weather um, this virus. So thank you, Unique and DOES. We want to highlight uh, two programs uh, today, both bringing the benefits of solar to D.C. residents. That solar for all that Tommy and I are very excited about in Solar Works D.C. Uh, we have been uh, very intentional uh, as, a, as a government that no D.C. resident should ever have their power turned off because they can't afford to pay their bills. And we've been very successful in that regard. We operate with the belief that no low-income family should spend more than 3% of their income on energy bills. Uh, and that's the most aggressive affordability goal in the nation. Uh, and so in addition to that, we haven't ever let our energy assistance funds run out uh, and known as the LIHEAP program. So when residents come to us for help, we've never had to say we can't give you anything. And that sounds like it should be the norm, uh, certainly for all cities. So, Tommy, I want to thank you for your leadership and making sure that our LIHEAP fund uh, always has the funds that it needs. No, thank you. And um, thank, thank you. So even better than uh, providing emergency relief, which is what I was just talking about, uh, we set up uh, funds 
programs, I should say, that prevent families from even getting into that type of debt. And that's what Solar for All does. Solar for All um, develops, Solar for All facilities um, support the development of solar energy throughout our city, then uses that power to drastically reduce electric bills and mo- for low and moderate income families. Some families can save up to $500 per year. A major, but there's a major misconception about the program, and that's that you need to own to participate. And that's not true. So no matter where you live, all you need to get a discount uh, is one, you need to meet the income requirements, and two, you need to have a PEPCO bill. So one disparity we've noticed over time is that not as many Latino families are participating in the Solar for All program. So today we're highlighting the partnership between the Department of Energy and the Environment and the Mayor's Office on Latino Affairs. So starting today, uh, constituents can walk into the Mayor's Office on Latino Affairs at the Reeves Center, bring their PEPCO bill, and there will be a staff member trained and ready to assist them in filling out a Solar for All application. That sounds great. Right? down at Reeves. We know uh, that in some cases language is a barrier to this process, so we'll also be getting uh, this announcement out in in, in Spanish. And finally, Director Morris Hughes will say more about this in a minute, but we are recruiting residents to participate in the Solar Works DC program at the DC Infrastructure Academy. Uh, And this program is the program that Mr. Alvarez participated in. And I think of SolarWorks DC as the ultimate fair shot program. Um, So you heard his story. He came to this country not speaking English and found an opportunity being trained uh, in one of the programs we created. That's a fair shot, that's a fair shot. It trains D.C. residents for good-paying jobs, green jobs, installing solar panels. Secondly, the solar panels that they install are installed on homes of low- and moderate-income neighbors to help them reduce their energy bills. And finally, all of the solar energy contributes to our Solar for All program and helps D.C. hit our climate and energy goals. So it's a wonderful program. Uh, And then the... FY22 budget, we've increased the number of residents who can participate. We've doubled it actually from 75 to 150 people. Uh, So I first want to invite Eduardo to come up, followed by Director Morris Hughes to talk about our partnership uh, with the Office of Latino Affairs and how we're recruiting more DC residents for solar jobs. Eduardo. Muchas gracias, Alcaldesa Bowser. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, for launching this initiative. Uh, thank you, our partners at DOE, Director Wells. Your team has been phenomenal uh, in helping the mayor to put this together. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Director uh, Dr. Unique, for helping uh, constituents like uh, Patricio to make their dream come true and to uh, get good paying jobs in DC uh, clean energy uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, This is what the Bowser administration is about. This is about inclusion. It's about taking care of our people. And uh, the mayor gave me the mandate to take care of every single DC Latino residents and make sure that we give them a first shot. And that's what we're doing here today. We're helping these constituents to enroll into the Solar for All initiative uh, to get a reduced electricity bill and save up to 50% of their uh, their, uh, electricity bill and annually up to $500. So that's a great thing to do uh, through our office on Latino First. The only thing that you have to do is to stop by um, the mayor's office on Latino First and bring your electricity bill because guess what? We are open. Yes, we're open. Just stop by. We're going to take care of you. 
It's going to be easy peasy, and uh, we're going to be there for you all the way. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, first, I want to start out by thanking you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you so much for the investments and the commitment, not only to D.C. residents, but programs that have the ability to change people's lives. Uh, Director Perdomo, Director Wells, thank you for all of your hard work ensuring all D.C. residents have access to these impactful programs. Mr. Alvarez, wow. Thank you for sharing your story. You know, I, I'll tell you, it's a little chilly out here today, but I'm warm and fired up because when I heard Mr. Alvarez speak and share his story, it reminded me why I got up this morning and went to 4058 Minnesota Avenue. That's what the Bowser administration is about. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. And as the mayor said, due to her investments in solar works, we're doubling the number of people who can participate. Any DC resident who is 18 years or older has a high school diploma or GED and can meet the benchmarks on the CASAS exam, can enroll in SolarWorks or any DCIA training programs. Our information sessions are held online every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. So if you miss one on Tuesday, you can sign up for Thursday or you can also drop by because we're open. Um, to learn more about the DC Infrastructure Academy, visit dcinfrastructureacademy.org, or you can always go to does.dc.gov and search uh, DCIA. We look forward to continuing to help all DC residents from across all eight wards for their fair shot and access to a pathway in the middle class. Thank you so much, and I'm going to pass it back to uh, Director Perdomo. Thank you, Director Unique. Uh, please, uh, now we're going to introduce one of the first beneficiary of this intervention, uh, Ms. Yanira uh, Menjivar. Please, por favor, venga, señora. Gracias. Ella va a hablar un poco de su experiencia en el programa. She's going to speak about her own experience. So thank you very much. Buenas tardes, buenos días, perdón. Good morning. Este, yo soy Yanira Menjiva de my la. Name, my name is Daniela Menjiva. De la zona 1. From Ward 1. De la Mount Pleasant. Uh, from Mount Pleasant. Y yo siempre busco ayuda. And I always uh, seek help. Y yo me voy para la alcaldía. And I go to the uh, mayor's office. Y donde me ayuda, donde voy frecuentemente. And I go there frequently. A que me ayuden. So that they can assist me. Y yo y vengo para que me ayuden. And I come here to seek for help. Uh, with the electricity. Y la um, gas. And gas. Y yo le doy gracias. And I give thanks alcaldesa. to the mayor. A um, Muriel. Ma Muriel. Y que Dios me la bendiga. And God bless her. Siempre. Always. Gracias, muchas gracias, Colocho. Thank you so much ayuda. for everything. Gracias. Well, thank you, everyone, um, for thank you for that testimony. We have two great testimonies today about how the city is here uh, to support you, especially um, with with energy. We're coming up on. The heating season, and I know we're all thinking about uh, how we can um, shave some cost. We're all thinking about that. So uh, let's investigate this. I know we're going to have a team that walks around in the neighborhood to talk about solar and make sure you get signed up. Uh, and at, at the Mayor's Office on Latino Affairs, we'll be happy to help you directly. So with that, I'm going to take some questions from the press, and then if there are any community questions, I'll answer them. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning. I'm wondering if maybe somebody from the government could answer this in Spanish for sure. our Spanish-speaking speaking stations. Uh, and I'm just wondering if you could just kind of recap in Spanish, you know, why you're reaching out to the Latino community and what you hope they take from this. Gracias por la pregunta. 
Eh, mi nombre es Eduardo Perdomo, director de la Oficina de Asuntos Latinos, y la intención de este programa es darle, eh, en la administración de Bowser, estamos siempre buscando de que las personas tengan acceso a oportunidades. Y lo que estamos haciendo aquí el día de hoy es brindar oportunidades a todos los residentes de Washington, D.C., sin importar su estatus migratorio. No importa que haya llegado aquí el día de hoy, los vamos a considerar como ciudadanos de aquí de Washington, D.C., y le vamos a dar la ayuda que ustedes necesitan. La importancia de esto es que a través de este programa van a poder ahorrar 500 dólares al año y con, combinados entre todos van a poder ahorrar a ser, a alrededor de 90 mil dólares en un año. Son 150 familias que vamos a enrolar en este programa y se van a beneficiar durante todo este año. Esta es el, la primera parte, luego vamos a seguir con más eh, eh, enrollments. Mayor Bowser, if I could, an off-topic for you. Sure. Uh, at, this morning, the D.C. Council is considering legislation, having a hearing on legislation that would mandate uh, vaccines for school, COVID-19 vaccines for school students. Uh, the CDC is poised to start approving this maybe as early as next week. If this does become fully approved for school-age students, What is your saying? What, what will the administration do? Will you re start requiring it? Do you approve of the legislation before the council? Um, I would have to look closely at what the council is saying. I don't know what dates um, their legislation is attached to. I don't think I would be supportive of an immediate mandate on children. We didn't have an immediate, immediate mandates on adults, and I don't think I would be supportive of immediate mandates on children. We do have fully approved vaccines for um, young people, I think 15 and over, or I think it's 12 and over, 12 and over. Uh, and we do have a mandate on student athletes in that age range. And so just to be to, to clarify, even if it is fully approved, you don't see your administration mandating it immediately. Well, it's not going to be fully approved. I think the first step is for it to be the um, I'm going to get the acronym wrong, the emergency authorization approval. And so what, what would it take for you to want to mandate it for D.C. school students? We have mandated for already for, for some all. of our school students. And Mark, we're gonna I'll have to, you know, confer with our entire team at DC Health uh and at our public schools. Uh our certainly our priority is that our children are safe and that all who are eligible get vaccinated, but also that all can go to school. Okay. And uh we want kids in person with their colleagues, with their teachers. Uh, in person, and we don't want to set up uh, hurdles to doing that. I'm really, really proud um, of families who, of, of eligible children who've already gotten their kids vaccinated. I'm proud of the kids for masking um, the way they've been asked to by their teachers. I'm proud of all of the administrators who are handling, in addition to uh, the academics, the very, very heavy responsibility of keeping kids safe in school and doing tests. And I know our principals and teachers take that responsibility very seriously. So as everything in this um, pandemic has evolved over time, uh, we have to, to watch what the scientific community is doing and saying and then adjust our policies accordingly. Community questions? Any community questions? Yes. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Carrie Kemp, and I applaud your uh, solar initiatives here. I just wanted to ask whether, whether there's any initiative to put solar on large buildings like the convention center and schools and various other things. Sure. So we do incorporate, as we're doing construction projects, we're always looking uh, for ways to make those buildings more energy efficient um, and neutral when it comes to producing um, 
to producing ill effects for the climate. So we're always looking at that. So some of our buildings, and Tommy may have be able to tick these off um, quicker than I do. They'll be net neutral, for example. Uh, a building, the school building that we just uh, built in Ward 4 meets those criteria. So we're always looking for ways. Uh, now, in terms of other large buildings. Retrofitting, like, yeah. Retrofitting. I, uh, Tommy, do you want to say anything about retrofitting plans on some of our buildings? We've done a lot, um, and uh, what I would like to do is get back a plan uh, or, or a place for you to go to see what we've done and what's in the plan. And I'll, I'll get, I have to get that back to you. I don't have it off the top. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, everybody.